we can have uh, real-time data or near to real-time data for the header posts. We just go to the system, say, no, uh, the equipment that uh, you supported us with, uh, here's the distribution. Looking at larger picture, yes, we are looking at uh, the code chain equipment, but later on, uh, that may be expanded. I'm blessing Sintesam Kamanga. I work as a product manager uh, for the digital health division. Uh, in the Ministry of Health, Malawi. Since uh, the start of using uh, DHS2 uh, from 2012, uh, there has been uh, a lot of improvement in terms of uh, health service delivery because uh, from the data we are able to check uh, which areas need more interventions and so on and so forth. So for DHS2 we have uh, several instances. So we have one which we are collecting the aggregate data, that's the HMIS, and then we also have another one which we are collecting the individual level data for surveillance. We developed uh, the DHS2 instance to uh, track the cold chain uh, equipment. This was done by making sure that we utilize uh, the DHS2 uh, capture app uh, to scan uh, the QR codes which are pasted on uh, each and every equipment. Prior to the project, uh, the monitoring of the cold chain equipment were only done uh, on paper as well as uh, using Excel-based files, which was challenging in terms of uh, having real-time data to know uh, the stock levels of the uh, equipment as well as uh, the operational status of the, uh, the equipment. But with this, it means now we can have uh, real-time data or near to real-time data for the header posts, uh, and then we should be able to make a decision out of that uh, data. On a daily basis, we can know the functional uh, status of the equipment. So, for example, if the equipment is indicating that uh, it's 40, it means there is need for an intervention to be made. So, uh, with that, it means already a code chain uh, a technician can be deployed to look at uh, what is happening with the, the equipment. And then, apart from that, it means we we'll also be able to know the stock levels of uh, various equipment, such that uh, if there are some resources, uh, equipment have been procured, we'll be able to know uh, in terms of how to distribute uh, those uh, equipment, because we can also, apart from just knowing uh, that data, we can uh, also add in some service delivery data to say, uh, based on, for example, the number of people that are being vaccinated uh, in this area, uh, how uh, can we allocate the, the equipment? So there are several equipment. So we have the uh, refrigerators, uh, we have the uh, vaccine packs. To carry the vaccine, it means we have to make sure that uh, it is maintained at the uh, required temperature uh, from the time uh, they are getting it from the uh, cold chain storage uh, up to uh, the last mile where they are conducting the uh, immunization clinic. Three months, because it was uh, just piloted in uh, two districts, and then from the feedback from that pilot uh, prompted uh, some uh, cold chain technicians from these uh, other districts, 18 districts, uh, to also follow suit. So uh, from the help of the uh, regional code chain technicians, uh, they were able to move around uh, the districts and register some equipment because the people in these other 18 districts, they did not receive the uh, formal training. So while waiting to receive the formal training, the regional code chain technicians went through uh, the districts just to make sure that uh, they give like uh, a brief uh, overview in terms of how they can uh, register the equipment and the like. So with that uh, little orientation, uh, the code chain technicians in these uh, other 18 districts, uh, they are able to uh, meet Money, uh, operate on the on the system. It's because of the interest, but also because of uh, the feedback uh, that they got. So there's a WhatsApp group uh, where. Uh, success stories are being shared, if there are challenges that are being shared. So they were looking at what is happening in these other two districts. They were saying, okay, uh, it seems this equipment at this other port is not working. Uh, can you please hurry and check? So they were much interested to say, ah, what is going on uh, with our friends? Uh, why can't we have uh, the same while waiting for resources to do the uh, training? Can you maybe uh, quickly uh, come over and uh, support? So now it's more of uh, like uh, real-time interventions. So because we're able to check uh, the operational status of uh, the equipment, it means if there are issues, uh, interventions can be done uh, there and then. And also 
There's also some sort of uh, transparency and accountability because if you move the equipment from one facility to another, you are able to uh, record that to say the equipment has moved from this facility to the other facility. So, for example, uh, if a GAV or UNICEF made to ask to say, we bought you uh, this equipment, where are they? It means we just go to the system to say, no, uh, the equipment that uh, you supported us with, uh, here's the distribution uh, here. And you can even do some audit, go on the ground and check uh, if those equipment are indeed on the, on the ground. So there's that transparency and accountability. So in those cold chain equipment, uh, there are remote temperature monitoring devices that are installed. So yes, we're able to track the equipment, but we would also want uh, to be monitoring the temperature. So we want to integrate uh, uh, the remote temperature monitoring uh, with this system. So we have our colleagues from uh, Nextleaf, uh, these are the ones which stored the remote temperature monitoring devices. So uh, now and then uh, they transmit the data about uh, the temperature. So if, for example, the temperature has gone beyond the threshold or it's below the threshold, uh, that data is able to be uh, transmitted uh, to the Nextleaf server. So we want to make sure that we integrate that data uh, within uh, this code chain equipment uh, system so that it can be coming automatically and then if it comes automatically, if it's beyond the threshold, uh, some alerts will be generated uh, to the cold chain equipment uh, technicians to say uh, this equipment has gone beyond the uh, threshold or below the threshold so that maybe uh, some uh, intervention can be, can be made. We also want to make sure that uh, we have uh, the training for the rest of the district. So we have 29 uh, districts in Malawi. Uh, so we want to make sure that uh, each uh, district uh, should be should be covered. People should have uh, the formal training. And then uh, looking at the larger picture, yes, we are looking at uh, the cold chain equipment, but later on uh, that may be expanded uh, now to look at uh, the whole physical assets management. So it was very, uh, very difficult and also it was dependent on the activeness of uh, the cold chain technician maybe in that district because essentially it was just an Excel file. And also, you don't have uh, an overview to say as a country how uh, we are performing in terms of quality equipment. It was very, very, very difficult. Mm -hmm.